Tech Revision with Mrs. Swanee Pooh. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is a video about something called circular economy, which is all to do with sustainability and how it's really, really important that now when we are designing products, we consider the circular economy. This is extremely important. We have for a long time designed products that do not consider a circular economy. This kind of makes it sound like it's to do with money, but really it's to do with uh, making sure that we aren't wasting resources. So I'm going to take you through what circular economy means. It's quite simple to understand um, and I'll give you uh, some information and a few different examples. So circular economy, what actually is it? So um, there's two different ways that you can approach the design of products. Now, this is the way that we need to get away from designing products that go from the cradle, as in, you know, the start of the product to the grave. OK, the end of the product. So, for example, you get the resources you need for the product, you take them. So it could be fractional distillation to get oil or drilling. Um, it could be fracking, it could be all different types of um, quite damaging uh, extraction methods to get the resources needed to make the product. We make the product and then we waste it, we throw it away. And the resources that are in this kind of landfill are hugely valuable. They, for example, will have to be mined again um, and virgin materials used again, meaning much more destruction to the environment. So. This is not a good way to approach the design, um, you know, the kind of process of um, a product's life cycle. So it's to think more about this approach called cradle to cradle. Um, so it's almost like a loop system. So rather than the traditional cradle to cr uh, grave approach, the idea is that the, the product is made. So we start with the production of the product. And there it is. Imagine it's something like a washing machine or something like that. We then have the use of the product. Um, and then rather than it going to waste here, the idea being that it's actually returned, disassembled by the company. And th they're called technical nutrients, but basically the resources. So, for example, it could be it could be aluminium. It could be things like um, gold and silver in electronics. It could be something called tantalum, which is used in every single mobile phone going and actually comes from um, Africa in the, um, in the Congo and has to be mined at great expense to the environment and also to the people that are there. So the idea is that those resources, rather than going to waste, go back into production again and are constantly being reused. So they are being kept in this kind of loop rather than going to waste and having to get new uh, materials. So this really dramatically reduces the need to source new materials, which is gonna reduce the impact on the environment. So you can see the benefit. Now, the inspiration behind this is um, biology really in terms of the natural world the natural world uses a um, cradle to cradle approach the circle of life um, but basically there are two different types of nutrients in the circular economy and they're called biological and technical and I'm going to talk you through those now so this is what I was on about with the sort of circle of life. This is this is natural. This is nature at its best, really. So, for example, you have um, plants that that grow. It could be that they are consumed by animals. Um, it could be that they are basically uh, pooped out or the plants die and they decompose. They go back into the soil and this actually enables um, this enables the new plants and new trees to grow because it's, they are providing nutrition to the soil. So this is kind of the whole idea behind 
um, circular economy. And if we can use as many biological nutrients as possible, this is why things like um, biopolymers, especially things like um, uh, potato pack, things that come from completely natural sources, when they are used, they can either go into the ground or animals can eat them. They'll go back into the soil to uh, provide nutrition and then the circle kind of continues. So biological nutrients, these are organic, non-toxic materials that can simply be composted and re-enter the ecosystem without harming the environment. So wood, um, things like, um, you know, foods, uh, biopolymers to some extent, as long as they are coming from those natural resources, um, any of those types of materials that are being used can um, be just returned to nature and they don't have a big impact. On, they don't give out nasty chemicals. They don't go to landfill. They are natural. So if we can use as many biological nutrients as we can, that's going to have a big impact on uh, reducing environmental uh, damage. Now, there are always going to be some technical nutrients. So this is this side here, the technical side. And what that means is it's man-made materials. So this is things like your plastics and your alloys and metals, um, aluminium, gold, silver. It could be different types of, of polymers. But basically what happens is they are manufactured, used in the product, um, the consumer uses the product and then it's returned back for disassembly and recycling and those things are put back into the manufacturing cycle again. So they are not thrown away, they are constantly kept in this idea of it being like a loop. So circular economy, just to sum it all up, is a cradle to cradle approach. Um, it's trying to keep valuable re resources in a uh, in constant use. So valuable resources are being used constantly. It's trying to make sure that we don't have to keep extracting new materials constantly. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Let me rub that out. Extracting new materials is uh, massively reduced and also if we can use as many of these biological nutrients as possible that's going to be really beneficial for the environment so this is something that you could be asked a relatively long question about but circular economy relatively easy to remember just try and remember that there's a biological side and a technical side and it's all about um, products being disassembled recycled keeping them in the loop so that the most use can be um, gotten out of those materials. Okay, see you on the next video.